Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. One of the most common flat earth arguments that gets put forward against the globe is the notion that we apparently can't just be there in space without some sort of a container holding the atmosphere in, otherwise it would just escape off into space. Now the globe answer to that is of course gravity, that the mass of earth attracts everything else around it that also has mass, and that includes gas molecules. To which Flat Earthers say gravity isn't real and we can't prove it's actually there. Except we can, but that's going to be a separate video. I mean, it's not like gravity's using Atlas VPN to pretend it's somewhere that it's not. Atlas VPN reroutes your data through its secure servers around the world to make people think you're in a different location and help keep prying eyes at bay. And thanks to the fact that you can choose which country you send your data through means you get to pick where a website thinks you're located, which can be especially useful for the many websites that customize its content based on the country it thinks you're in. So if you're visiting abroad, a website may load content relative to that country. But thanks to Atlas VPN, you can make the website think you're back home and load the relevant content. Best of all is that you can install it on as many devices as you like from just one account to help keep the whole family safe online. Try it for yourself today using my link in the description to receive a massive 86% off, but you'll also get a full six months extra free. And all with the peace of mind of a 30 day full money back guarantee in case you aren't completely satisfied. Now, while flat earthers might reject the notion of gravity, they obviously can't reject that when we throw an object up into the air, it comes back down. And since Newton's laws of motion state that without a force acting on an object, it would continue traveling up into the air, the fact that it comes back down means something must be making it come back down. But the flat earthers can't actually agree on what that is. Many say it's density that if an object has a higher density than its surroundings, it will sink. If it doesn't, it will float. Others say it's electrostatics, that all objects possess charged particles and that the Earth itself is charged, which causes objects to be attracted to it. Except, despite there being plenty of observations we can make that show those suggestions don't work, both of them would still allow space to exist without a barrier in place shown by the fact that our atmosphere has a pressure gradient to it. The higher you go, the less air there is. And that isn't a case of the pressure's decreasing just because it's colder up there, the density of the air itself reduces too, i.e. there is physically less air molecules the higher you go. Otherwise, planes would be able to fly as high as they liked. At sea level, the density of air is about 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed meaning if you were to take a box of air that was one meter by one meter by one meter, and you placed it on a set of scales, the air within that box would weigh 1.2 kilos. At 30,000 feet, the ambient air in that box would weigh only 0.02 kilos, and by 85,000 feet, which is around where the SR-71 flew, it would weigh less than 0.000007 kilos. So there is no denying either that our atmosphere has a gradient to it. So let's remove gravity from the equation and we'll run with the hypothesis that one of these flat earth claims is causing the pressure gradient instead. So for electrostatics say, everything that has mass has a charge to it that is attracted towards the earth. So that means air molecules themselves must have a charge to them. And as there is more air closer to sea level, then that means those molecules must be being attracted towards the Earth. If the Earth was trying to repel the molecules, then they would be being pushed away from the ground, so the air pressure would be increasing as you got higher, not decreasing. If the molecules were neutral to Earth, then the air pressure would be trying to equalize, which would create equal pressure all the way from the ground up to the firmament. So the fact that we have more molecules of air nearer the Earth means that if electrostatics is the cause of the pressure gradient, it's because the Earth is attracting the air. Exactly like gravity. So it wouldn't require a container because the Earth itself is keeping the air contained. And it's a similar story with density, or relative density disequilibrium as many flat earthers call it, that an object will move depending on its density versus the density of its surroundings. 
So if you drop a stone into water, the stone is more dense than the surrounding water, so it sinks. If you drop a ping pong ball, it's less dense than the water, so it floats. But the ball is still more dense than the air above the water, so it doesn't go any higher than the surface of the water. But even that argument doesn't actually seem to be a problem for the notion of space without a barrier. Because, as we've already established, the density of the atmosphere decreases the higher you go. Which means for any given altitude, the air at that altitude will be more dense than the air above it, so it can't rise up. And any amount of air pressure will have a higher density than a perfect vacuum. So by flat Earther's own logic of relative density disequilibrium, the atmosphere couldn't escape into space because that would be higher density moving into lower density. And that's ignoring that space isn't even claimed to be a perfect vacuum, it's only a near-perfect vacuum. So we don't have atmosphere next to vacuum, we essentially have very, very, very low gas pressure next to even slightly lower gas pressure. Now, if you released helium in a room, it would need the ceiling to contain it, otherwise it would be free to keep flying up. But if we look at experiments with, say, sulfur hexafluoride, which is a very dense gas, you can put that into an open top jar and it will stay there. You can float balloons on top of it to know it's still in there. It will not try to equalize into the room because the gas is denser than the surrounding air. So once again, the fact that we have a pressure gradient shows we don't need a container holding it in. If we needed a container to hold the atmosphere in, the atmosphere would be like the helium balloon actively trying to get higher, which again would mean the pressure would be higher the further up you go. The atmospheric pressure gradient on a globe is obviously caused by gravity, and if gravity suddenly stopped right now, yes, the atmosphere would be free to expand into space because gravity is what is holding the atmosphere down. But if we're saying that gravity is not there to begin with, and yet we still have a pressure gradient, then both explanations of relative density and electrostatics would still allow space to exist without a barrier, even on a globe. I think a few flat earthers seem to envisage the vacuum of space being like a giant hoover that physically pulls air away, but that's not the case. Vacuums are just an area without matter, there's nothing there to produce any force, but if vacuums did have a suction force to them, then the force would vary depending on the pressure of them. If only perfect vacuums produce a force, then the moment any molecules of air got into it, it's no longer a perfect vacuum and the force would stop. But even if it's an inversely proportional force, whereby a perfect vacuum produced the strongest pull and then the pull reduced as the pressure increases, that would mean that even within the flat Earth firmament, given that we know pressure at 20 plus miles up is almost a vacuum already, the air within the firmament would be getting pulled up, which would then produce lower pressure near the ground and pull the air back down, and repeating until the pressure was equal throughout, which would mean no pressure gradient. Although there is another flat Earth claim which wouldn't work with the globe. Some flat earthers point out that relative density and electrostatics don't fit with our observations of all objects accelerating towards the ground at the same rate. And they, so they claim that if it's not gravity causing objects to accelerate towards the Earth, then perhaps it's the Earth itself accelerating up towards the objects. I.e., the Earth is accelerating upwards at a rate of 9.8 meters per second per second and subsequently that pushes everything up with it. So when we throw an object up in the air, we accelerate it further. But the moment the, the object leaves our hand, it stops accelerating and then stays at the same speed. But the Earth continues to accelerate underneath it and it catches it back up, which makes it appear from our reference frame as though the object has fallen back to Earth. Now that's pretty clever and would explain the pressure gradient. In fact, that ties in nicely to a point I'd like to clarify from one of my previous videos about gas pressure, where I said, flat earthers keep asking to see an example of gas pressure next to a vacuum without a container, yet I keep asking to see a container with a measurable pressure gradient, and so far, nothing. 
And I would like to clarify that point because I didn't really make it clear. Flat Earthers tend to specifically ask to see things like 14 PSI of gas pressure right next to a vacuum with no barrier. Which is a total straw man anyway, because as we've just covered, the GLOW model doesn't claim to have 14 PSI right next to a vacuum. There's a big pressure gradient in between. But my response is actually to ask to see a 14 PSI pressure gradient within a container. Since we know from high altitude balloons that we can get to heights where there is almost no air pressure such as Mr. Sensible's Mage 2 balloon that was launched from around 14 PSI, it went up to about 38 kilometers or 23 miles, and the onboard barometer recorded a minimum pressure of about 0.04 PSI. So I'm generally asked to see such extreme pressure gradients within a container. Now, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward to produce somewhat of a pressure gradient within a container. Hell, every time you accelerate in your car, you produce a pressure gradient because when your car begins moving, the air inside doesn't until the back of the car collides with the air and pushes it forward. So under acceleration, the air pressure will be slightly higher at the back of the car than at the front until the car stops accelerating and stays at a fixed speed. Then the pressure can equalize. But of course, that analogy only works when the container is moving, so it doesn't really work for flat earthers who say the earth is stationary. But for upwards accelerating earth, it would work in creating a pressure gradient. And arguably, it could also require a firmament container depending on the makeup of the earth. If we're talking about, say, uh, for example, a disk earth, then accelerating that upwards would push the air off the sides, so a container would be needed to stop that. But if the Earth is an infinite plane throughout, then it wouldn't necessarily need it because there could be an infinite band of air across the plane as well, so there would be nowhere for it to escape to. However, upwards accelerating Earth suffers from a fundamental problem, which is that if the Earth were accelerating at 9.8 meters per second per second, then that means for each second that passes, the speed of Earth increases by 9.8 meters per second. So then starting from stationary, it would take 354 days for the Earth to surpass the speed of light. And there would need to be an expanse for the Earth to move through as well. Although I did hear Rachie talking to Fight the Flat Earth the other day about the whole concept, and she suggested that maybe the Earth isn't necessarily moving in a straight line, but rather traveling in an endless loop. However, this could arguably wind up with the Earth being like a centrifuge where everything on Earth is being thrown out towards the far edge. And the outer side of Earth would have a higher linear speed than the inside, which would then cause objects to be brought back to Earth at different rates on the outside edge versus the inside edge. And so subsequently, the pressure gradient that we see within the atmosphere wouldn't be equal either across the plane of Earth. But well, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks once again to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.